Ryzen Pro was announced today, plus some serious issues with the new X299 motherboards. If you're thinking about getting one, make sure to stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to GamerMeld. Before I get started, don't forget to check out the GamerMeld Discord server. We have tons of great conversations about hardware, so make sure to check that out in the description below. So on to the news. First up today is some not so great stuff. Intel's launch motherboards seem to be having major issues, specifically with the VRMs overheating. Der Bayer, I hope I pronounced that right this time, did a video which I'll have linked in the description where he went over his difficulties and basically it's bad stuff. We're talking after only 15 minutes with one of the boards, the backside of the PCB for the VRM was at 105 degrees Celsius. One board seemed to do better than others, but that appeared to be due to its throttling much sooner. Keep in mind that this was at a relatively low clock, well, for these chips that is, at 4.6 GHz. I know that's actually pretty high, but these were supposedly able to get up to 5 GHz. And it isn't just Urbayer. As reported by Tech Power Up, a user at Overclock.net who claimed to have purchased multiple boards is having the same issue. So the question is, what's going on? Derbayer did some testing and found out that when he removed the heat sinks and just had some air blowing on the VRMs, it stayed in the much more reasonable 60 degrees territory. What's odd is that this isn't an isolated incident. It seems pretty much all the mains boards are having this issue with Asus even doing a small recall. Why this is happening, I mostly agree with their Bayer's reasoning for it. Intel pulled back the launch from August to June, and that didn't give motherboard manufacturers any time to do adequate testing. This will almost certainly hurt Intel in the long run. I don't know what they were thinking. Sure, you need to make a competitive product to compete with AMD, but you can't rush it to this extent. It does nothing but hurt the company. With that said, AMD did have some issues at launch themselves, but they seem to be mostly software driven. Hopefully with it just being the heatsink design, it won't take too long to fix it. Another issue Derbayer had was the 8 pin power supply connector for the CPU. It got extremely hot. But once again reported by Tech Power Up, Johnny Guru doesn't think it's the board or CPU's fault, but the actual power supply he was using. Only time will tell on that one, but there's one thing I think that's certain. If you plan on purchasing an X299 at launch, you probably want to hold off. At least until revisions can be made, since the issue with the VRM seemed to be completely hardware driven. Next up we have the launch of AMD's Ryzen Pro CPU line. There had already been rumors floating around about a Ryzen Pro, but were mostly assumed to be mobile chips for laptops. Well, the Ryzen Pro CPUs announced today are desktop CPUs, though the mobile chips are coming in the first half of 2018. Either way, they're mostly what I would expect. Ryzen Pro is marketed towards businesses and public sector professionals for use in workstations. You can see core clocks, TDP, and pretty much everything else are the same as their non-pro equivalent which obviously leads people to question what the difference is between the pro and non-pro CPUs. For one, I'd guess these are essentially lotto-winning silicon, as one of AMD's main talking points is longevity with a longer warranty, which is of course very important for businesses. Another major difference is the silicon level security, including secure boot. But honestly, I don't think the pro CPUs are going to be something enthusiasts should be looking at. There's no word on unlocked bootloaders or not, but I personally think there's a high chance they won't allow overclocking, which will probably be the biggest downside for enthusiasts if I'm right. With that said, I'm discussing it here for a reason. The launch actually looks to have given us some insight into Ryzen 3. It's not guaranteed to be the same as the consumer line, and not all of Ryzen's lineup is mirrored here with 1800X, 1600X, and 1400 not present, but it should give us a clue. As you can see, it looks like Ryzen 3 is continuing AMD's approach of higher cores with them essentially competing core-wise with the i5s by offering 4 cores and 4 threads, which means no SMT unfortunately, but the base clock of the 1200 is 100MHz lower than the Ryzen 5 1500, but it offers the same boost clock. Either way, it looks that AMD won't be going as low as 2 cores, which will almost certainly make many consumers looking at Ryzen 3 very happy. So while that does it for today, what do you think of the news? Disappointed in Intel's board issues? And what do you think about the Ryzen 3 lineup? Let me know in the comments below. And definitely don't forget to check out that Discord server. It's in the description below. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggest a video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.